Okay, thank you, Linda, and thank you, Anita. I hope you are back on. Um, first of all, I would just like to thank the amazing organizers of this event. And of course, all the midwives who are pretending, participating and attending this conference. And also, of course, I would like to wish you all a very happy International Day of the Midwife. <clears throat> My name is uh, Katrine Kjalv, and I work at Maternity Foundation as head of the clinical development team. I'm a Danish midwife and I have a Master of Public Health. Uh, and I've worked with the Maternity Foundation for almost the past five years. And I will be presenting together with my colleague, Pearl. So Pearl, would you just like to introduce yourself shortly as well? Thank you, Catherine. Uh, so a uh, very happy International Day of the Midwives to all the participants who have joined us today. So I am Pearl. I am an Indian nurse midwife with a doctoral degree in nursing and midwifery. I'm working with Maternity Foundation as a clinical coordinator for nursing and midwifery education. Thank you. Over to you, Catherine. Thank you, Pearl. If I can go to the next slide here. Okay, so this is the agenda for today's presentation. We will give you a very short introduction to our organization, Maternity Foundation. So primarily how we work with digital health uh, and how we use digital health tools for capacity building of healthcare workers um who work within maternal and newborn health and then we'll talk a little bit more specifically about our digital health tool the safe delivery app and then finally which is a little bit of a surprise thing for this event that we would like to introduce you to our newest clinical um, module in the safe delivery app our digital health tool which is on perinatal mental health uh, and then we'll have a, a short q a session at the end So first, I would just like to um, take you through how Maternity Foundation started out with an NGO um, and, uh, and how also our journey as an NGO uh, working to improve maternal and newborn health began uh, and where we are today. So Maternity Foundation was founded in 2005 as a traditional sort of smaller NGO working in Western Ethiopia, where the focus was on capacity building of the health system. Um, through clinical trainings uh, and on also empowering the community through health education. But in 2015, Maternity Foundation launched the Safe Delivery app uh, after having published a randomized control trial, which significantly showed uh, improved skills and knowledge for healthcare workers in handling complications in obstetric, obstetric uh, and newborn care. Um, uh, for the healthcare workers um, using the safe delivery app. Um, between 2015 and 21, we have worked really on scaling this digital health tool, the safe delivery app. Uh, and we have reached more than two, by 2021, we had reached more than 200,000 healthcare workers with national scale in both India and in Ethiopia. And sort of our target for 2025 is leveraging our Safe Delivery Plus uh, global program, which builds on the Safe Delivery app as a digital tool, but also includes online learning and these clinical trainings. Um, and the aim for us uh, is to reach more than 600,000 healthcare workers, primarily midwives, by 2025. So the Safe Delivery Plus program is really a digital sort of modular learning and training universe. So Safe Delivery Plus is one sort of connected and integrated learning experience at sort of the intersection between uh, our initiatives, uh, programs and tools. So it consists of the Safe Delivery app. Uh, it consists of online learning and clinical trainings, which are both online and offline. Um, and the Safe Delivery Plus is also has the advantage of being powered by data science to sort of continually improve and personalize the user experience. 
And with the safe, the idea is that with the safe delivery uh, plus healthcare workers are able to receive quality training and the learning that they need to ensure safe deliveries for women and uh, newborns. So this next slide is just a little bit in terms of our reach. So we estimate that our work so far has reached more than 390,000 healthcare workers to date and we have trained more than 100,000. Um, we have users uh, of our safe delivery app, our key tool in more than 40 countries, which as you can imagine has given us really a wealth of insights and experience about how the app can be implemented in different uh, programs, projects and settings. And then finally, we know that it works because the use of the app has been subjected to a number of studies, as I mentioned before. So including two randomized control trials, um, which have shown that the app is effective in increasing knowledge and skills uh, around safe delivery. Okay, so one of the most important things to highlight about our work with the Safe Delivery app and the Safe Delivery Plus program is that it is not a standalone tool or a program. We work with multiple partners, both in in-service and pre-service. Um, in some countries, um, the self-directed gamified learning platform, which is built into the Safe Delivery app, which is called My Learning, um, has been accredited for CPD points. This is the case in both India and Tanzania uh, and Cambodia and other, other places as well. And this has primarily been done in collaboration with their nursing, the, the national nursing and midwifery councils. Another example uh, is pre-service education. So um, where we have as an example work with, for example, the Indian Nursing Council to integrate the app into the curricula of new midwives. So the app has been integrated into specific units and students are required to work through the content of the safe delivery app in their during their sixth and seventh semester. And then 10 marks are assigned for the safe delivery champion certificate. Uh, for the internal assessment and the certificate completion has been added to the course notebook as well. So that means if you if you go through the, uh, the learning component of the F, um, okay. that is the requirement to do through the sixth, sixth and seventh semester uh, when you're studying to be a midwife in, in the nurse midwife in India. We also, in addition to this, we have also seen, we also see faculty members at some of the colleges uh, that they have already started using the safe delivery app and integrating so as an integrated component to support their teaching. And then we also have <clears throat> examples of more sort of loose integration of implementation. So for example, in Ghana, uh, the Ghana Midwifery Association and other partners supported the wide sort of dissemination of the app through national events. And sharing one was fake and one was a scouting. There's, uh, there's a little bit of background noise. So if, if uh, you could turn your microphone off, please. Thank you. Um, through, um, through national events, uh, regional dissemination and captured feedback for further tech developments and improvements of the app. Another thing we also do is clinical trainings with the app as a sort of core element, both remote and underground. And we also have this sort of open system for linking and sharing with other digital uh, platforms and tools. So for example, the content of the Safe Delivery app is also available on the World Continuing Education Alliance platform. And we have developed additional e-learning and uh, content specifically for a learning management system in India to support the learning of nurse uh, midwife students in the country. So this next slide, this is sort of just a summary of some of our partners that we have worked with at different, at very different levels. Again, really just to reinforce that we are all about strengthening the existing, existing work of partners. Okay, so now just uh, let us dive a little bit deeper into the Safe Delivery app. Um, it's a digital health tool. 
uh, developed to support healthcare workers, primarily midwives, uh, improving their knowledge and skills in, uh, in BMANC, so basic emergency obstetric and newborn care, and other selected topics within maternal and newborn health. Um, it's free and it works offline once it has been downloaded to the device. Um, and it can be downloaded uh, both for Android phones and iPhones. Um, so you just have to go to App Store or um, Play Store or Google Play to, uh, to find it and just write Safe Delivery App and then it will appear. It's very simple and intuitive and engaging with animated instructions. So as I mentioned before, there's a gamified learning component also included where the user can test her or his knowledge on the clinical content. And also a very important thing about the app is that it's specifically designed to reach the most remote healthcare workers. And the pictures here, this is how it looks. So this is just a slide to show you what the content of the safe delivery app is. Um, we also have additional besides these modules that are mentioned here. We also have um, a module in uh, in selected versions on um, FGM, uh, and we are content. So the when we first started out, all the, we had eight modules that were built on BMONC. Um, but since then, we have um, sort of widened our scope uh, and continue to build new modules for the safe delivery app. So one of the newer ones is also the normal labor and birth module, which as a midwife, I thought was probably the most important one to include in the app as well. So the app consists of five different features. So there is instruction, uh, instructional animated videos, um, which will show um, procedures that are needed uh, during um, labor and birth um, in an animated, simple way uh, in a step-by-step -step approach. Um, we also have action cards, which is a written uh, card within the app where you can quickly, it's sort of a quick reference, so you can quickly look up what you need to do um, if a baby isn't breathing or if a woman is bleeding and so on. Then we have our practical procedures, which can be something like how to insert a urinary catheter. Um, and we also have a fairly comprehensive drug list, which you, which you can find in the top right corner of the app um, with all the drugs that are needed to perform BMUNC. And finally, we have the My Learning component at the end, which is a self-directed learning platform where you can uh, test your knowledge in the different topics. So another really great thing about the app is that it is customizable and it's modular, which means when new global clinical guidelines are released, uh, we can relatively easily, easily and quickly update the safe delivery app. Um, we have many different versions of the app. We have different languages uh, as well as clinically adapted versions um, and we also have, as you can see on the slide here, um, adapted the uh, the animated visuals as, as well to the different regions. Um, for when I say clinically adapted, I mean that we have actually um, adapted the the content for specific versions um, so that it fits with the national guidelines in the country. And lastly, we also have a, a use a very modular structure in the app. So we're able to add new relevant content uh, to the app. So new topics, for example, which was the case during COVID-19, where um, there were lots of information coming out about um, COVID-19 and how to um, what to do as a midwife and how to um, um, to um, uh, prevent uh, COVID-19 uh, and this information we relatively quickly was were able to add into the safe delivery app um, and we did that in collaboration with UNFPA and ICM um, and because so many people had already downloaded the safe delivery app they actually had access to the information um, through the app relatively quickly and also because the guidelines changes changed quite often also in terms of vaccinations, for example, we were able to get that information out to them very quickly. So um, 
this year uh, we are particularly busy because we are working on these new clinical modules for the safe delivery app uh, as you can see we're planning on widening our scope from being just focused very focused on BMUNC, as I said before, to also including um, new modules such as modern contraceptive, safe abortion, antenatal care and postnatal care. Um, and then we also have released the perinatal mental health module um, in 2023. And it is uh, available also when you download the safe delivery app, if you download the English global version. Um, yeah. Now, um, my wonderful colleague Pearl will take you through this new module and the safe delivery app, um, the perinatal mental health, and uh, also a little bit about the background of why it was developed. Thank you, Pearl. Thank you, Katrin, for uh, laying the foundation and for uh, letting us know about the work of Maternity Foundation and the safe, uh, significance of safe delivery app. So taking forward from there, I would just like to explain to you about the perinatal mental health module. So can I have the next slide, please? So perinatal mental health here, it means that it's the time during pregnancy and the first 12 months in the postpartum period. And as we know, during this period, the woman's body and the mind undergoes a lot of changes which predisposes her to complications such as anxiety, postnatal depression, perinatal depression, and birth-related post-traumatic stress disorders. So when we see the studies, we can see that more than 20% of women, that is one in five women, develop mental health condition during the perinatal period. If the woman is poor, the condition is still worsened. That is up to 50% of women living in poverty will develop a perinatal mental health condition. So that is a huge number. Not only women, even men, the partners are affected. And studies show that one in 10 partners may experience perinatal mental health problems. So these conditions are caused by a combination of changes in biology, psychology and the environment and competent, respectful and supportive care is required to identify and support women who suffer from such health conditions. As we can see, one in five women in the low and middle income countries experience anxiety and depression, while one in 10 women in high income countries experience anxiety and depression. And most women require only light mental health support to overcome these issues and maternal and health, child health services are in a unique position to support women in their mental health. And we have to remember that everyone has the right to good mental health and appropriate treatment. So the perinatal mental health, so poor mental health during the perinatal period may affect the well-being of the woman and her infant as well as the family and it predisposes her to higher risks of obstetric complications like preeclampsia, PPH and low birth weight including stillbirth. Uh, it is a tragedy if a woman loses her life after she gives birth to a life. So suicide is an avoidable, preventable condition that can be handled well by maternal health workers if only we identify the perinatal mental health issues early and care for the women. So when healthcare providers are trained to identify symptoms of mental health conditions during contacts in the perinatal period, they can make a huge difference in the lives of women. So now let's just look into why this module was included in the, we just looked on why this module was included in the safe delivery app. Now let's see what uh, all are present within this app. So this app includes basic practical information about perinatal mental health, the risk factors, barriers to seeking care, diagnosis and symptoms and screening tools. Many times we think that we have to go search for the screening tool, but here we have the Edinburgh postnatal depression scale, the generalized anxiety disorder scale, all placed under the practical procedures. So any screening can be immediately done with the help of these screening tools. 
Not only that, we have prevention and treatment methodologies, medications in the drug list are also available. The action cards in the perinatal mental health module contains the details about conditions such as perinatal depression, anxiety disorders, bipolar disorders, perinatal and puperal psychosis also. There are details on infant outcomes and also a note on violence against women, which is very important. The practical procedures, they contain details on various treatment options such as counseling, trauma-informed care, psychoeducation, cognitive behavioral therapy, psychological first aid, and so on. And we have a very interesting my learning platform, which is in the form of a quiz which helps the learners evaluate themselves and move on from the level of being familiar with the module to being an expert in the perinatal mental health module. So all these are included within the module in the safe delivery app. And what do we hope through this module? So this through this module, we hope that there would be an increased focus on perinatal mental health midwives and other healthcare workers will be able to identify women because identification is the first step in supporting such women and helping them so midwives feel more confident in providing mental health support and reducing stigma for mental health conditions enabling an environment where women can voice out their needs so that their needs are met ensuring respectful care and promotion and prevention of uh, promotion of mental health and prevention of mental health disorders. Caring for carers, we can see that it is stressed here again. So we emphasize on this because providing care for women experiencing perinatal mental health conditions can be stressful for the healthcare provider. And so this app talks about professional support and self-care techniques for the carers so that they'll be able to address such issues if they are suffering from any uh, illness also. Uh, I would just like to conclude by saying we in Maternity Foundation firmly believe that it should never cost life to give life and the joy of motherhood should be experienced to the fullest extent by every woman. So let us as midwives on this International Day of the Midwife, promise ourselves that we will update our knowledge and sharpen our skills by utilizing the digital tools that are freely available, that are widely available, so that we are ever ready to provide a positive childbirth experience for all the women that we encounter. So with this, I would like to close our session and open up for the Q&A session. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I can see I wanted to know if this was hospital-based or out-of-hospital evidence from hospitals or home. Um, so the, the, the initial um, randomized control trial that was done with the safe delivery app was done in Ethiopia also, um, and that was on in the health facilities. Uh, smaller health facilities uh, with the midwives and so the, I, it, the 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 concept of the app really what we have done is taken uh, global guidelines who guidelines and sort of boiled them down to these sort of uh, 10 minute uh, approximately 10 minute animated videos um with the most important information to save lives so that you don't have to run through um, a lot of pages of guidelines that can be complex. Uh, so, and also the fact that you have it in your pocket um, uh, is also an advantage. So what we, what the idea really was to sort of boil down lengthy guidelines into something that's easy to understand. Uh, and, and also with the very visual components that you can see how to do uh, by manual compression when a woman is bleeding, for example. And I can see Shannon is saying we don't have um, we don't have national guidelines, and that's the case. That that's not US is not the only place we have. What we've done really is that we have um, sort of five um, global versions of the safe delivery app, which primarily builds on WHO guidelines, but then we have them in different 
languages. So we have it, Spanish will be coming out very sh soon, but we have Portuguese, Arabic, French, and English out as it is right now. Did I forget any, Pearl? And those are all the same, based on the same guidelines. And then we have a lot of other national versions with the, um, with and language versions where the content has been aligned uh, with the national guidelines, if there are any. Maybe I can also, I can see this one comment about difficulties downloading the app. Um, it, sh it should be uh, possible, but um, on that note, uh, it is good if you are in a place when you have to download it to your device where there's a sufficient internet connection because it does have these animated videos included. Um, and that means it does require a sufficient internet to, to get it downloaded to the app. But once it's on your device, it doesn't require internet at all, which is one of the um, assets of the app really. I believe Maxine has a question. She has a hand up. I've enabled you to turn on your sound if you want and speak, Maxine. I'll write it in the chat. Ah, there you go. Very good question, that as well. I'm all for that one. <laughs> we, we deliver pizzas, That's not babies. Um, I think uh, I, we haven't actually uh, considered changing the name just because sometimes that's difficult when you're already out there with a name that a lot of people know. But I do uh, hear your reflection um, to thinking about something less uh, medical. And also, you're also right, um, for, because we are actually widening our scope quite a bit uh, at the moment. So it, it might not be the right name. We haven't thought about changing it for now, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll have that in mind. Then there's also a question on, do the animated videos come to your country of um, work? So we have, um, so we have actually um, animated videos with the different visuals um, for specific versions. Um, in the My Learning section, the the um, the digital learning component where you can sort of quiz. This it's a quiz um, component where you can uh, test your knowledge. We have mixed all the different visuals uh, in the supporting sort of the questions in the in the app interesting question there about china i know there are um, a lot of limitations with china i'd also i also want to share this app with my students but i'm not sure it can be used in china sorry i don't know if it's it's if it's um it can be used in china we don't have a specific version for china um so i i actually i don't know i i'm sorry a question from Leticia. Thank you, Maron. So Maron <laughs> says that Leticia was asking if you update it as and when new things pop up in the field. Um, yes. Yeah, so we so we do update it, um, and then of course to get the the updated version of the safe delivery app, you do need to uh, go in actively and update it. But usually there there's built in sort of a pop up notification. Um, which will state uh, what the new what what has been changed or what has been added to the app. So it so you if you have internet connection where you are, you should be it should be fairly easy to get the updated version of the safe delivery app. But we quite often say if you're not in a place where there's sufficient internet connection, then always always uh, remember to think about updating it if you're using the safe delivery app when you do actually come to a place where there's sufficient. Uh, internet connection. And please let us know, Jan, what the answer is. Is it accessible in China? <clears throat> we would love will, to know. Uh, I think it's a fabulous yes, app, to be honest. It's a, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Linda. And I will surely uh, follow up on that. Oh, how is the sustainability from your side as an organisation? Yeah. Um, so we, um, so the app is free for all users and that's how we would like it to continue to be. That's that's uh, that's the basis of what we do. 
Um, but we have sort of built in what we call sort of a freemium business model uh, that has sort of enabled us to reach healthcare workers across the globe. So the app is not, as I mentioned, a standalone tool. So we work through partners as an integrated component of bigger systems um, and complementing already existing programs in countries and so on. Uh, whether it's, it's educational program or a humanitarian response or a development project, but really to ensure um, sort of our financial sustainability, we started to build up this freemium model where, um, so it's kind of known from other apps as well. So, uh, so the solution is free itself, but there's add-on services that can be purchased at a uh, at a at a premium but in our case we decided to make the app free for the users um but we do require uh, in country partners uh, when we when we work to implement an app in a country and they will often co-finance these premium services which can be these clinical uh, national adaptation so that it's uh, it's a collaboration with them um, maybe a governmental institution, Ministry of Health, um, and then they will help us uh, in, uh, in, uh, in paying for the premium services, which can be national app uh, adaptation, it can be trainings, and it can be implementation support. And we also have a lot of data coming out from, from the app uh, on usage, which is also something that we quite often share with partners so that they can see okay, do we need to, we can, for example, uh, see uh, in which regions the app is being used in a country. And so we can share with partners if there's a specific area where, there, there's, um, where, the, where the implementation efforts could be improved. I was in another room again. Have you answered Marcus's question? Is the app integration for free? Um, so that is some... Um, we haven't done it with a lot of uh, uh, other um, digital tools, but um, I think I will refrain to, uh, I, I don't think it's for free. We haven't done it, uh, but it's often been a collaboration with other apps because it's an asset for both, right? Um, so it's something that our uh, technical team works on in, in larger projects usually. There's also a question from Maxine again. Who funds Maternity Foundation is your future secure? Um, so we um, have, um, so it differs quite a lot. We have quite a lot of uh, donors um, and uh, so we have uh, a lot of donors and we also have a collaboration with, uh, as I said before, government. so what we do is we are only, as an NGO, we only have country offices in India and in Ethiopia. Um, so we are 100% dependent on implementing partners in country. Um, and we always, it's always a collaboration with implementing partners, um, ministries of health and so on. And quite often we work together with, for example, UNFPA, who has also been uh, supporting us in developing um, this new perinatal mental health module. But we with also, also with regional and uh, national UNFPA, for example, we they also support us in uh, implementing in countries, but it can also be um, other um, in governmental institutions like JICA or GIZ from Germany. Um, so it, it differs quite a lot uh, who our partners is uh, are, um, and also it differs quite a lot how, uh, to what extent the app is implemented in a country. As I mentioned before, in India and Ethiopia, it, we have actually scaled the app quite significantly. In other countries, um, we have we might only have been doing some trainings, and it has sort of taken on uh, off by itself. Okay, well, I think we'll have to leave that there because we don't have um, <laughs> we don't have any more time left. So, could every if anybody's got any more questions, please take note of Katrin's um, email address, which is on this slide. Before I move it on, um, and we will just complete here. Um, lots of great questions, and I, I again I heard about this app couple or more years ago I have it on my phone even though I'm not practicing as a midwife anymore um, been retired for a long time and it was it I do think it is a fabulous resource and I do share about it quite often okay so I'm thank just going to move on to the final last two so thank you both first of all Katrin and Pearl for a fantastic innovation and um, 
and uh, presentation.